Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel, I am Hashem Ali Khan. So far I have completed 4 units in the subject business economics. Now I am going to start unit number 5. The first unit of business economics, I have given the videos on the meaning of business economics, what is micro macro economics, what is the law of diminishing marginal utility, what is the law of equi marginal utility. These things I have given the videos in unit number one. Unit number two, demand analysis. What is demand? What is the law of demand? What is the elasticity of demand? And then I have given the videos on cross elasticity, income elasticity of demand. This is the second unit. Third unit, supply analysis. What is supply? What is the law of supply? What is elasticity of supply? Then utility analysis, consumer surplus. These things I have given the videos in unit number three. Unit number four. Production analysis. What is production? What are the factors of production? What is the law of uh, scale? And uh, what are the economies and diseconomies of large scale production? These are the videos already I have given in the first four units. Now this fifth unit, the topic is uh, cost and revenue analysis. So this is the first video on this unit number five. In this video, I am going to explain you about the different concepts of cost. So before explaining the different concepts, take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board. Then I will explain all the points in detail. First of all, cost. Cost is the expenditure incurred in order to produce the goods and also in order to provide the services. So the cost, the total cost will not serve the purpose. For decision making, the cost should be classified according to different categories. So here uh, in a firm, the management must know what are the different types of cost incurred in order to produce the goods. Until and unless we know the behavior of the cost, the nature of the cost, we cannot be able to control the cost. Controlling the cost is one of the main objectives of the management. Otherwise, the cost will increase. When cost increases, the profitability will come down. So, what are the different types of cost? I am going to explain. In examination, very frequently they will ask this question. Explain the different concepts of cost. So here, there are several costs that a firm should consider under relevant circumstances. Management's main function is to take the decisions. Decisions can be taken only when the management have the information. So these different types of cost, if the management know, then management's job of taking the decision will become easier. Now, it is quite essential for a firm to understand the difference between various cost concepts for the purpose of production and decision making. So it is compulsory on the part of the management to know the meaning and significance of different types of cost. Then only the management can be able to take prudent decisions. Now one by one we will discuss. First is actual cost. The actual cost is the total cost incurred in order to produce the goods or to provide the service. Without finding out the actual cost we cannot be able to find out the profit or loss. So profit or loss can be ascertained only after finding out the actual cost. It is the total cost incurred in order to produce the goods or to provide the service. Second type of cost is opportunity cost. Opportunity cost is the income foregone in the next best alternative. Simple example I'll give you. Suppose we have two alternatives, A alternative, B alternative. The management has to apply the resources either on A or on B. If the resources are fully applied on A, we have to forego B. If we apply the resources on B, we have to forego A. That means opportunity cost means what is the income foregone by not using the resources in a particular alternative. Example, the management decided to I mean, invest all the resources in A. That means management is foregoing the income from B by not I mean, using the resources in B. Similarly, if we use the resources in B, 
we have to forego the income of A that is called opportunity cost. Next one is sunk cost. Sunk cost means the cost which is already incurred in the past and we cannot take any decision regarding that cost. That means already the cost is incurred. We cannot change the decision. We cannot change the cost by taking a decision. It is called sunk cost. It is a past cost already we have incurred. Simple example I'll give you in a business premises. Rented premises. Rental agreement is made with the landlord that every month we will pay so and so rent. That's all. So according to the agreement, the management has to pay the rent. It's a sunk cost. We cannot change the rent because it's already a prior agreement made. So cost incurred in the past, now it, it, is, it cannot be changed. It is called sunk cost. And sunk costs are also called unavoidable cost or unescapable cost. So all the past costs are sunk costs. Now incremental cost. When we change the level of activity, the cost will also change. For example, presently we are making 1000 units. Now we want to increase the production to 1200 units. So we are changing the level of activity. When we change the level of activity, the cost will also change. The cost will also change. So incremental cost means the increase in the cost due to increase in the level of activity. Level of activity. So when we increase the level of activity, cost is increasing. That is incremental. If we decrease the level of activity, the cost will decrease. That is decremental. So this incremental and decremental can be known as differential cost. Difference in cost due to change in the level of activity. Next comes explicit cost. Explicit cost means the cost which is actually paid, which is actually paid in cash. Example, salary paid, rent paid, telephone bill paid, electricity bill paid. All these are the expenditure which are paid by the business. That is called explicit cost. And the other name of explicit cost is out of pocket cost because it is a cost incurred in cash. So it is called out of pocket cost. Now implicit cost, it is a notional cost, hypothetical cost, not actual cost, but for the purpose of recording, we have entered this cost as a notional cost, imaginary cost. Example of implicit cost is the rent of own premises. Suppose a firm is running the business in its own premises. So there is no question of rent, but they are providing rent of own premises. Why? Because we want to compare the profit of our firm with the other firm. If we do not provide for rent, then we are not charging rent, but the other business is charging the rent. That means we cannot be able to compare the profitability. So that's why notionally we are providing for rent. That is called implicit rent or imputed cost. Implicit cost or imputed cost. It's imaginary cost, not a real cost. Next one is book cost. There are some cost which does not involve any cash payment. Only adjustment entries are made. Example of such cost is depreciation provision for depreciation provision for tax uh, provision for taxation provision for doubtful debts these are the cost but does not involve any cash so this non cash cost is called book costs next direct cost the cost which is specifically incurred in making the product is called direct cost the cost which is which can be identified in the finished product which we can see in the finished product example in a case of furniture manufacturer the furniture manufacturer is making a sofa set so what is the expenditure incurred in raw material of that sofa set labor charges paid in making that sofa set these are direct expenditure which we can see the expenditure which is identifiable in the finished product is called direct cost. Example, best example of direct cost is material cost and direct labor. Then indirect cost. Indirect costs are those costs 
which are not specifically incurred on a particular product but it is incurred on all the products so these indirect costs should be apportioned among all the products example the rent of the factory the factory rent is paid but in the factory so many items are made so the rent of the factory will be apportioned among all the products made in the factory that is called indirect cost not specifically incurred on a particular product not identifiable in the finished product is called indirect cost now controllable cost some costs are controllable and some costs are non-controllable uncontrollable so controllable costs are those costs which the management by taking a decision can be able to control the cost example the raw material the raw material is a controllable cost because the management has to find out from where we can be able to procure the raw material at a cheaper rate how we can use the alternative material so in this way the management can be able to take the decision in order to control the cost so some costs are controllable which by management can be able to control reduce the cost and non-controllable cost the cost which cannot be controlled once it is decided it will remain fixed example i have given non-controllable cost uh, like uh, rent of the premises we have entered an agreement with the landlord that every month we will pay so and so amount of rent so once the agreement is made we cannot be able to change that is non-controllable cost but in the long run all costs are controllable in the long run in the short run we can divide the cost into controllable uncontrollable but in the long run every cost will be controllable next comes historical cost the cost which is already incurred in the past that means cost is already incurred then we will record it is called historical cost or simply the past cost is the historical cost now replacement cost the cost of replacing a new asset in place of new one, in place of old one suppose an old machine we want to replace it with the new machine what is the cost we have to incur in order to replace a new machine in place of old machine that is called replacement cost shutdown cost the cost which has to be incurred even if the factory is shut down for a temporary period sometimes the factory has to be closed the factory has to be shut down for a short period but during that period some of the costs are there which has to be incurred which has to be incurred uncontrollable cost so the cost which has to be paid even if the factory is shut down for a short period is called shutdown cost marginal cost the increase in the cost when we increase the output by one unit when we increase the output by one unit what is the change in the cost that is called marginal cost example we are producing suppose 100 units and spend 1000 rupees for 100 units 1000 rupees we have incurred suppose if we make 101 unit one unit extra then the cost will be 1100 1100 rupees is the cost for making 101 units earlier we are making 100 units so what is the increase in cost if we increase the output by one unit that is called margin cost but when we increase the output only by one unit only variable cost will change fixed cost will not change if we increase the output by one unit so in other words we can say marginal cost is the variable cost next comes discretionary cost a cost which is decided or decided by the management the cost which is not related with the production but the cost which is decided by the management management if they will they will incur if they don't they will not incur example advertisement advertisement is a discretionary cost because advertisement is not related with cost of production but advertisement is decided by the management so management will decide whether to give advertisement or not this is called discretionary cost so once the management has decided later on the management can withdraw also next conversion cost 
Conversion cost means the cost incurred to convert the raw material into finished goods. The cost incurred to convert the raw material into finished goods. Example, from the total cost of production, if we exclude material cost, the remaining cost is called conversion cost. From the total cost, deduct the material cost, the remaining cost will be called conversion cost. Fixed cost. The cost which will remain fixed irrespective of the level of activity. Whether we produce more number of goods, whether we produce less number of goods, the fixed cost will remain same. No change in the fixed cost irrespective of the level of activity. Next, variable cost. Variable cost is a cost which vary or change according to the level of activity. That means more level of activity, more variable cost, less level of activity, less variable cost, no level of activity, no production, no variable cost. Example of variable cost is material. If we want to produce more goods, more material is required. If we produce less number of goods, less material. Fixed cost example rent. Whether sales are there or not, whether production is there or not, rent has to be paid. Next comes last one, average cost. Average cost means the cost to make one unit. What is the cost to make one unit? So how to calculate average cost? Take the total cost divided by number of units produced. You will get the average cost. So totally 20 different types of costs I have explained. But this is not the exhaustive list. Many more types of costs are there. But these are important. So hope the concept is very much clear regarding the cost. In examination, this question will be frequently asked. Inshallah, we'll take up the next topic in the next video.